Hello and welcome to the ITV News in London tonight. Allegations of racist abuse at Chelsea from a former player who says it destroyed his life. Good evening. A former Chelsea footballer has described to ITV London what he says was a culture of racist bullying at the club in the late 1970s and 80s. It was a time notorious for abuse from the terraces, but as a 13-year-old boy dreaming of a career in the professional game, he says it was one of the club coaches who targeted him. The abuse, he says, has destroyed his life and nearly 40 years on, it is still having an impact. He also told us he was shocked to see our report yesterday, which exposed the level of abuse some players still receive today. He told his story to our sports reporter, Amy Lewis. Now, some of this was reported to police, but it wasn't taken any further. Just putting this in still exists, but I suppose one step of progress that's happened since the 70s and 80s to now is that every... Amy Lewis, thank you. Next tonight, a tour guide who was on Westminster Bridge when a terrorist drove his car at pedestrians exactly a year ago spoke for the first time today about how close he'd come to being killed. Several of his group were hit by Khalid Massoud's vehicle. He says it's remarkable that none of them died. Five others were killed that day and a year on, Parliament fell silent to remember them. Our political correspondent Simon Harris heard the account of the guide who'd just been on the bridge doing his job. Well, PC Keith Palmer was the officer, as you heard in Simon's report, who paid the ultimate price a year ago. Even though he was unarmed, he stopped terrorist Khalid Massoud from entering the Palace of Westminster. As PC Palmer lay dying from his injuries, his close friend and colleague, Sean Cartwright, was hearing the news unfold that there had been an attack. While senior correspondent Ron K. Phillips now on his memories of that day. PC Sean Cartwright on his memories of his friend, PC Keith Palmer. Well, let's go to Simon Harris now, who is on Westminster Bridge for us tonight. And Simon, a year on from that attack, what's changed there? Now, the government today criticised Kensington and Chelsea Council uh, for, having to slow, uh, for being too slow to find new homes for the survivors of the Grenfell Tower fire. A group of mothers scared about the levels of knife crime in London have organised a silent march in Camden this evening. There's been a number of fatal stabbings there in the last few months. Well, Rhea Chatterjee is at the march this evening. And Rhea, this community really desperate to highlight just how bad the violence has got there. You're watching the ITV News in London, still to come. But first, at the height of its success, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was one of the most popular quiz shows on telly. You could phone a friend, go 50-50, or even ask the audience. But you might remember one contestant who famously went for another option. Hello, thanks for having us. Thanks, thanks for having us. I mean, we shouldn't laugh at cheating, but when you're watching back that old footage of the coughing, it is quite funny, isn't it? Do you, do <laughs> well, you, yeah, do um, you remember watching it the first time when it, when it actually happened? Yeah, I, I remember watching Wonderful material for a play. Yeah. yeah. Yes. How does it translate, though? Well, it was a, it was a, it was book, a book originally. A yeah. book originally, which uh, a immersive, interactive piece of theatre yeah. Yeah. that and really engages the audience. And it's on at the Noel Carroll Theatre, I know it opens next week, but it, you were touring it regionally as well. Where Not all, touring it, well, we started all, in Chichester. Ah, in Chichester. Where it started. So you've had the kind of audience reaction. How does it go down with the audience? <laughs> well, incredibly well, actually. That's why we got a, a Western transfer. <laughs> yeah. We don't really want to have to, you know, get involved or do some acting, but I think this is mm. a way of engaging the audience. Yeah. You all have to, especially year seven, you have to practice your coughing a lot, though. Well, um, the, it, yeah, there are, there's a Lucy, and also when she was on the show as well, because there's a brief interlude of that. She, yeah. well, she was Chris Tarrant. What's the thing of your, your portrayal of him? I don't know, actually. I haven't, I've yet to ask him. <laughs> Apparently, he came and saw it yeah. in Chichester. Best of luck. So it opens next week. So it's not going to say anything. Else <laughs> hey, no, 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 thank you. Best thank of you luck. Much. A lot. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Bye. Well, the ITV News continues the national and international stories at 6.30. Here's Mary Nightingale. And there will be more on that world's best teacher in just a moment. But first, here's Manali Luca with the weather forecast. Finally, we've been hearing about it all week. The world's best teacher, Andrea Zafariku, picked up the global prize in Dubai at the weekend. And today, she returned to her school in Brent for the first time since to show off the prize to her pupils. But we had a surprise in store for her too, which led to an unexpected and tearful reunion. Here's Carolyn Sim. 
So well deserved. And that is it from us for now. We're back with the latest after ITV News at 10. In just a moment, Mary Nightingale has the ITV Evening News. But for now, from me and the rest of the London team, bye-bye.